guys, today I'm going to go over the 1-7 notes with you on interval notation with unions and intersections. What I'd like you to do first is pause the video and take a minute to do these two teamwork problems. So go ahead and check your answers with mine here. Just as a quick recap of graphing inequalities, anytime you see a sign that is less than or greater than without the or equal to sign, you will have an open circle. Anytime you see the greater than or less than sign that has the line underneath it, meaning greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, you will have a closed circle, indicating that you are including the number four in the closed circle and excluding the number two in the open circle, which means we just get really close to this value of two, um, but we don't actually include two in our graph. So now we're going to take a look at interval notation using parentheses and brackets. So our first one is open intervals. Open intervals is when you have your regular parentheses. When you're using parentheses and you're trying to graph an interval, for example, this one, 3 comma 5, this is just like graphing when you have an open circle. So I'm going to create my number line. I'm going to include 0 and go ahead and label up to the number I need. So when you guys are making your number lines, all I really need to see is that where zero is located and then just number up to the numbers that you need. If you want to do more, that's totally fine, but that is at least what I need. Um, so back to the problem, graphing the ordered, sorry, not the ordered pair, the interval from three to five, and I have an open interval. That means on three and on five, I'm going to be putting parentheses and then darkening this area in between, identifying that the interval is from 3 to 5, including any numbers inside there. If you look at the next one, this is the closed interval. This is when you use the hard brackets, so or the square brackets. So this is when you are including your values, like a closed circle on inequalities. In parentheses, we said was not including the number. So for the closed interval, I'm again looking at interval 3 to 5. So I'm going to go ahead and make my number line again and be sure to number it. And now instead of having open brackets on 3 and 5, I'm going to have these square brackets indicating that I will include the values 3 and 5 in this interval. The last interval we're looking at is the infinite interval. And what makes this infinite is that these intervals have positive or negative infinity inside of them. So if we look at this interval, we have negative infinity to 3 or 5 to infinity. So this is like graphing our inequalities, and we have um, arrows going two different directions. So that's going to work the same way here. So I'm going to put on my number line, again, I'm going to go from 0 to 5. I'll go ahead and put a couple negatives just to get the idea, do a couple larger than 5 to get the idea of going above 5. So now I'm going to graph this first interval, negative infinity to 3. So that means I'm not including 3, I'm just getting really close to it, and my arrow goes below it. And then my next interval, 5 to infinity, I'm going to put that square bracket on 5, and then I'm going above 5. And that is graphing with my interval notation. For our vocabulary, we're still talking about intersection and union. However, there are other names for these as well. So for intersection, it's still the same thing, except for now looking on a graph. You're trying to find on the graph what they have in common, which is what we can call a conjunction. And then for unions, again, it's the portion bringing everything together, so the total collection of the numbers, and this is called a disjunction. For our first set of examples, the directions say use a graph to determine the intersection or union and then write our solution in interval notation. So if I look at my first problem here, I'm looking at an intersection. And so I'm going to need to graph each interval and find where they overlap because I'm looking for things they have in common for an intersection. So my values, I'm going from 1 to 6. So I want to identify where 0 is and then I'm going to go to 6. Now I'm going to graph this first interval 1, 3. And notice there's closed brackets. So I have a closed bracket on 1, closed bracket on 3. I'm going to darken the area in between. And now I'll graph the second portion of the interval. So that has an open bracket on 2, which means it's not included, and an open bracket on 6. And then I'm going to darken this area in between. So if I'm looking for an intersection, I'm looking for what they share. What you have to make sure is that 
based on if the number is included. So does it have an open bracket or a closed bracket on it? That's exactly how you're going to write your solution. So our solution is finding that intersection. So I'm looking for the overlap, which is right here in my graph. So therefore, I would say that 2, 3 is my interval, where 3 is included because it's included in my first interval 1, 3 with the hard bracket, and it's within the interval of 2, 6. And then for 2, I'm going to have my open bracket because it is included in my interval of 1, 3 here in the red. However, this open bracket means it doesn't actually include 2 in this interval. So if I'm looking for an intersection, it has to be in both of them. So I would keep that open bracket on 2, meaning I would get infinitely close to it. Now if I look at number 2, this one I'm going to be doing a union. So I'm bringing this together, okay? So it's the total collection of numbers. So I'm going to create my number line again. And be sure to label it. And now I'm going to graph this interval. I'll go ahead and do that in red again. So 1 to 3. So I've got 1 to 3. And then 2 to 6 with an open bracket on 2 and an open bracket on 6. And now I'm trying to do a union. And that's pretty much bringing everything together. So I'm looking for my lowest value, which is 1 included. Let me start that over. We need to create the solution for this interval. So, like I said, let me start that over. We are unioning these together. So, we do keep that closed bracket on one, and we take it to the end of the interval six to open bracket. Because what we're doing is we're bringing them together. So, you'll have a closed bracket on one and an open bracket on six. Now, we're going to be looking at graphs that are given, and we're going to write the union or intersection. So let's read the directions. Use a union or intersection of two infinite intervals. So that tells us we have to use infinite intervals, meaning infinity has to be in them, to describe the solution set below. We will classify as a conjunction or disjunction. So if you take a second to look back in your notes, the conjunction was for intersection, and the disjunction was for unions. I remember conjunction and disjunction. I really relate to intersection. Intersection is what they share, what they have in common, and I look at the tell the co-captain to share the position. So it kind of helps me remember the difference between the two. So let's look at this example. So this first graph here, if I have to write infinite intervals, this is going to make it a little easier because if I'm going this direction and the arrows continue on forever, I am starting at negative infinity there, and infinity is always have the open brackets, and I'm stopping at negative one where this bracket is. And since there's an open bracket on the interval, I'm going to have an open bracket here. Then I'm going to look at my second one, and it says 2 with a hard bracket, so included, and it continues on forever this direction, which is positive infinity. Now I have to decide, is this an intersection or is this a union? So looking at this graph, I notice that I have these two pieces to come together, so it's Either I'm less than negative 1 or I am greater than 2. So if you look back up into your notes, you'll find that this is a union. And so if we're a union, we would classify this as a disjunction. Looking at number 4, again, keeping in mind we have to write infinite intervals because it's very easy to see this and think, oh, I'll just write negative 3 with an open bracket to 1 with a closed bracket, which does express the interval, but the directions say to use two infinite intervals. So that means we have to think about how did this come about using infinite intervals. So what I look at is look at how your brackets are facing. So this one's facing this way. So that means if this was an infinite interval, it would continue down from 1. So it would be negative infinity to 1 with a closed bracket. And then if I look at this bracket, the way it's facing this way, that means it, would going, it was going positively above negative 3. So I would have open bracket, negative 3 to positive infinity. So what I have to think about is what is that called when what I see here is their overlap. So this is essentially an overlap of two infinite intervals. This would be called an intersection. To classify an intersection, we would call that a conjunction. The last three examples we are doing are going to be expressing an interval in set builder notation, which is one of the notations we learned on the first day of notes, and then we're going to graph it on a number line. 
So if I read this interval, this is negative 2 included to 5. So if I need to take that over notation, that means I'm going to have x such that now x is going to fall between these two values. I can write this as an inequality. So I'm going to have negative 2 x to 5. And then I need to figure out, okay, what is going to be my inequality? Well, if I'm doing negative 2 and 5 and I'm including negative 2, that means x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2, but less than 5. That would be my set builder notation. And now I need to graph this. So I would create my number line. And I'm going negative 2 to 5, so I'll put 0 here, negative 1, 2, and then up to 5. And then I'm going to graph. So on negative 2, I would have my hard bracket or my closed bracket, and on 5, I have my open one. And I'll give you a little in between. If you look at number 6, this interval is 1 to 3.5. So this is going to look like x such that. So x is going to be between two numbers. So I have 1, x, and 5, and I need to figure out, okay, what am I saying? I'm including 1 here, so that means x is going to be greater than or equal to 1. So I'm including 3.5, so less than or equal to 3.5. So there's my set builder notation. My graph, draw my number line from 1 to 3.5 for 0. I'm going to do 1, 2, 3. This time I'm going to go to 4 so that I can identify this to my 3.5. And so I'm going to have a closed bracket on 1 and on 3.5, and I'll darken that area in between. And then lastly, we have an infinite interval because infinity is in it. So if I want to put this in set builder notation, I'm going to say x such that this is now saying this interval is negative infinity all the way up to negative 1. So basically, I'm just going to be less than negative 1. And so I'm going to say x is going to be less than negative 1. And if you look at my bracket there, it's an open bracket, so I will have to be less than 1. So there's my set builder notation. And lastly, I'm going to graph this, so I'll create my number line. And I just need 0 and negative 1. And I have an open bracket here. Oh, not a closed bracket. An open bracket. And then I will create my arrow going to the left, darken it a little bit to show that interval. That's just for today. Do these numbers on page 195. And then I also want you to add these two problems, um, the graphs that I drew here. And I want you to practice using the intersection and union with infinite intervals to express the solution set. And then classify them as a conjunction or a disjunction. Um, these two problems that I'm adding on and I have drawn here are just like our examples three and four. So good luck and have a great weekend and I'll see you guys on Monday.